Trump winning really big here in South Carolina, defeating Nikki Haley in her own home state, all with the help of local Republicans. And that includes our next guest, who has supported the former president throughout the campaign and was actually standing right next to him during his victory speech last night. That's her on the right. South Carolina Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett joins us now. Lieutenant Governor, great to have you on. A historic win last night. It is. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just get right into it. Tell me how the women's vote broke down, because Donald Trump gets a lot of slack for, like, you know, oh, he's, he's you know, women aren't so sure about him. But Republican women in South Carolina went, went strong for him. You know, I'm hearing that from women across all different sectors. Because you're a mom, I'm a mom, we talk about that all the time. And what I'm hearing from moms is our kids are less safe today than they were four years ago under Donald Trump. And that is making women very uncomfortable and wanting the former president back in power today. Yeah. And I think that's why they're coming out. And, you know, as moms, as women, we want to make sure that our kids are safe and that they have a future. And they know that Donald Trump has proven to do that in the past, and they want that again. In that, in the primary, Nikki Haley, and, and also in, in, in all the other states that she's been running on, she's been playing heavily on the women car, on the women card. How come that didn't work in her own home state? Why didn't she win over more women? Well, again, I think it's because women want a proven leader right now. You know, the world is in disarray. And we saw what happened in Georgia just a few days ago. I, you know, my heart goes out to that mother, to that family losing their daughter. But we're seeing that happen all across the country. And so women are just saying, what are we going to do? Like, how do we get our kids safe again? How do I feel OK sending my child out for a run uh, without me? And so that's what's doing it. Moms, you know, we can talk about all the political rhetoric that people talk about. Oh, but people want to have change they change that affects them in their in their own home, right? right? At their kitchen table, you know, Bidenomics has been a, a colossal failure. Um, we have gas prices up, we have food prices up. For the first time, I'm hearing people say, "I don't know if I can fill up my whole tank because I have to go to the grocery store," and and that's what people want to hear. How are we going to get our gas prices down? How, how are we going to stop this invasion at the border? Uh, how are my kids? You know, is the American dream? You know, my grandparents were Polish immigrants. How are we going to get that American dream back within the reach to our children? And that's what they want to hear about, and that's what President Trump is talking about, and women are taking notice. Yeah, I mean, he just seems like, you know, he, he brought the issue of immigration forward, you know, way back in 2016 when a lot of people thought it was politically incorrect to do so. And here we are, here in 2024, it's the number one issue. It's even beating the economy, which, as you say, is not doing so great. Absolutely. How do you think this very tragic death of this young girl um, moving forward is going to affect the debate. I mean, I'm, I'm just praying people don't forget about her because, as you said, this is, first of all, family, but also this could be any one of our daughters. Absolutely, and that's what scares me. But, you know, it's up to all of us to keep this front and center in people's minds, just how unsafe... We don't have to look very far. You know, you look in New York, you see what's happening um, to our law enforcement, you know, getting beat up by illegal immigrants who are coming into this yeah. country. Um, people are done. I think they're waking up. They're saying enough is enough. I was with President Trump at the Palmetto Bowl, and I said, you know, President, tell me what I can tell people right from you. And he said, listen, on day one, we are going to open our energy pipelines again. We are going to shut down our borders. And on day two, we're going to have to figure out how we, we have mass deportation because, you know, we're seeing there's not all good actors that are coming here. There are probably good people coming here for a good life, but we don't even know that. No. And some of these countries like Venezuela won't even take back their people right now. <laughs> it's going to be really hard to do these deportations unless that changes. Uh, really quick, what's, what's next for Nikki Haley? I mean, what is she really up to? I mean, we've had this conversation all day, um, you know, and, and even yesterday because we knew how the results were going to be. Yeah. Why, why is she continuing on it? Why wasn't that a concession speech? What's her plan? Is it that she's planning on getting on corporate boards and making money? Is she just trying to be the runner-up in case something happens in these court cases? Is she going to go no labels? What's the plan? You guys know her better than we know her here in South Carolina. Well, you know, I, I really don't know what the plan is for her, but what, what I would hope is that as Republicans, we all come together. You know, South Carolina, it's the pathway to the White House. It was that, it's been that for years. And, you know, that's why Democrats tried so hard to get their primary here to be the very first Democrat primary. 
But I, I want all Republicans to get behind our nominee. Our nominee is going to be Donald Trump, uh, and we need to get him in the White House. We need to make sure we're sending a clear message to Joe Biden that we want him out in November. And so just as a party, we all need to come together, because we need to win the White House, and we need Donald Trump in there. But we need to win the Senate, and we need to get our House reps, we need to get them more support in the House. Well, it's great having you here. We've had a great time in South Carolina and a lot of people moving to the state. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.